You ever find yourself being completely ignored and unappreciated by the exact guy you're actively doing the most for? Would you believe me if I told you it's because the nicer you are, the meaner and worse those men will treat you. I know that it sounds horrible, but let me explain. On today's show, we're going to be discussing seven nice girl habits all women must break so that you can finally get the men addicted to you instead of ignoring you. First things first that you need to be getting rid of is your adjustment addiction. The moment you meet a guy and he says to you, oh, well, you know, if you want me to tell you about all my exes, what, what, what's my type? So my last ex, she was blonde and she was like five foot three. And my other ex, she was a blonde Italian girl. So yeah, I guess you could say blonde is my type. And then the first thing you start thinking as you're on this date, damn, uh, so maybe I should dye my hair blonde because maybe the brunette is going to turn him off. Here's the really weird part. When you come into a relationship or a situation or a talking stage and you're fixated on how do I be more of what you want and less of myself, you have an adjustment addiction to trying to make physical adjustments to who you already are so that you can be more of what that man wants you to be. Guys notice when you're in the mindset that everything that you do is to try to get him to like you more. Every time he says, yeah, I like this when it comes to my woman. I like when a woman does that. So you're scrambling thinking, oh, you like when a woman does that instead. Let me let me make sure how I can change everything about myself. He's going to say to himself, I mean, great that you'll literally scrub the floor for me. Great that you have an addiction to making any sort of adjustment that I want you to make. But what he's not going to be doing simultaneously to being able to acknowledge that is respecting you. You need to understand that his desire to build with you and his respect for you will always be one in the same. But men cannot respect you when you have a lot of nice girl habits going on. And the moment you are thinking about how to change or adjust yourself so that you can be more of what someone else wants, you will not be thinking of what are you bringing to this relationship and to this table? Are you the person that I'm looking for? Have you shown me that you're someone who I should be investing my time and energy into? It is not your job to make adjustments to be more of what he wants until you decide that this is the guy who I'm looking for. You do not give him anything in return, especially nothing that's in between your legs. I can assure you, a man who really wants to build with you and really likes you, 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 will actually appreciate the character traits about you that make you uniquely you. If a man is trying to turn you into his ex, I need you to quickly and efficiently run as fast as you can away from that man and that relationship. Number two is being a sacrifice Sally. Imagine the guy you're talking to, he's at the club partying it up, work, he's grinding up his waistline in the club, drinking some 1942, and you know what he does after he spends all this time in the club? He calls you up oh, let me know I'm, I'm thinking of you so i'm trying to i'm trying to see what's up with you i know we we ain't spoken in like what's it been like three four four weeks something like that but i want to see you let me see you right now yo when he wants to see you despite him not keeping contact with you he's gonna dump all this stuff on you to make it seem as if it's pressing for him to see you right now in the second quite convenient for him you're gonna say to yourself well you know i did have a bunch of stuff to do in the morning and i am supposed to wake up at 6 or 7 a.m tomorrow because i got a shift uh you know what i'm gonna call in sick i'll see you right now just for a little bit you come over give me that love give me that affection and i'll drop everything for you even my sleep so that i can spend this time with you i know you're thinking i like you so much and i want you to like me so maybe you'll like me if i'm available to you making it easier for men to hang out with you and spend time with you will never make you more attractive to them in fact it makes you a lot less attractive because they recognize that despite the fact that I only hit you up when it's convenient for me, you still drop everything for me. And when you categorize yourself as the woman that will drop everything and sacrifice everything whenever he wants you, they categorize you as such and they never give you anything at all ever again 
unless it is convenient for them in that moment. You want to put yourself in a position where you're someone that demands respect. Men aren't just going to come across into your life and respect you for no reason. They're going to test you to see if you're one of those women who are going or if you're one of those women who don't go for the BS. Number three is called being misses. It's not that deep. When someone comes along in your life, they're obviously going to make some mistakes. Some of them might cross boundaries small. Some of them might cross boundaries, which are major. I want you to rid yourself of this mindset that you hear people say on TikTok, that you hear people say on Instagram, that it's not that deep. When someone crosses your boundaries, it is always that deep deep for example you don't like if a guy in your life is going to be cursing you out and calling you outside of your name when you guys are in an argument you're done you're, we're not even going to have any more of a discussion i already made it clear to you what the boundary is until you realize how to make this adjustment or you realize how serious it is when you cross my boundaries if you're not going to be able to realize that or not be able to make adjustments because when you get mad you just get so mad that you can't think straight cool, then you're not the person I'm looking for. I'll find someone who can control their anger. The men that come in your life that want to take advantage of you are going to try to convince you that everything is not that deep. When that mindset fills your brain cells and you start soaking in that day in and day out, don't be a party pooper. You don't have to address everything. You don't got to be mad about everything. You start to convince yourself that your problems and your boundaries are not real problems and not real boundaries. Then you'll say to yourself, oh, I'm supposed to be mad chill. I'm supposed to be a cool girl. I should just say nothing. I should just hold it in. Two things will happen. The first thing that will happen is you're going to have a buildup of all of this emotional weight and eventually you're going to explode. And the second thing is he's going to realize that when he does cross your boundaries, if you're not making them face consequences that are equal to the boundary that they've crossed. When you want to be a nice girl, you don't want to have uncomfortable conversations. And an uncomfortable conversation would consist of you sitting them down, addressing what they did to you, why uh, you don't appreciate it, and why you won't tolerate it. I used to be obsessed with that mindset too. I thought the coolest version of me was someone who takes everything as it's not that deep. Makes me so cool. Makes me so easy to get along with. Uh, a man's desire for you is also tied to his respect of you. When have you ever heard a guy say, hey, I want to make the mother of my children. I want to put a ring on the woman who has no boundaries and no standards. Number four, do Doing both jobs is the mistake you make as a nice girl where you justify the fact that the guy is not doing what he's supposed to be doing in a relationship. You start thinking to yourself, well, maybe he's not doing his job because he's got things going on. Let's say you meet a guy, the date went good. You slurped up some spaghetti, you ate some fettuccine Alfredo and things were nice from your own perspective. A week goes by. And you kind of are texting, you know, every couple of days. He doesn't really reach out to you as much as he did. And then let's say it's two weeks now. He doesn't seem to want to reach out to me. So you think to yourself, hey, uh, maybe it's my job to reach out to you and ask you, is everything okay? And he says to you these magic words. Oh, you know what? I'll be honest with you. I've just been so busy. I have work. I have family. I have friends. And so after he says that to you, you go, oh, I'm so sorry that you've been so busy. Do you think maybe on Friday I'll come over, I'll pay for my own Uber to come over to your place. I'll order Uber Eats from my own account. Do you think that that sounds like a good, nice, relaxing time for you? You start to think to yourself that, oh, it is my job to be the man be the one that's intentional. And when you tell me that you haven't been consistent with me because you've been so busy for the past two weeks, now it's my job to step in and make it easier for you to spend time with me. You essentially end up uh, going out for a dinner date. He's just there. You're your own girlfriend and your own boyfriend. And for some of you, you actually end up building your relationship off of him just being there and you're doing both jobs. You're managing your emotions and his emotions. When you're in that mode, you're thinking, oh, he's going to like me more because I'm showing him how much effort I put forward into this relationship. No, what actually ends up happening, he ends up resenting you more and disliking you more because you're not giving him the space to be a man. And you're also too swept up 
and trying to make this work to realize that he doesn't even have real interest in you. Guys will not only dislike you, but resent you because you're too dumb to realize they're not actually interested in you. Because they say to themselves, do you not realize I'm doing nothing for you? And sometimes they almost do it purposely as a cry out to you like, do you not have any respect for yourself? So he's trying to make it clear to you all the ways he's giving you nothing so that you can gain a backbone and actually walk out the door. Some of you haven't asked that question to yourself. Why am I here? How does this serve me? Is this mutually beneficial or just one way? Number five is being what I call an essay texter. You're going to be trying to spill your biography to that man, simultaneously be trying to learn his autobiography through text. When you're an essay texter, your entire MO is trying to get to know someone over text and trying to keep communication with them over text. Nice girl syndrome will have you convinced that if you're present 24 seven, never leaving people even a smallest bit of breath to have a break from you, that is what will make them appreciate you more. Never do not be an essay texter. It will not serve you. It will not increase someone's desire for you. In fact, it'll make it that much easier for men to say to themselves, cool, I don't need to go out on a date with her. And see, when we scroll up and we go up into the adjustment addiction, your adjustment addiction gets triggered when a guy tells you that he's having a little bit of anxiety at the fact that you don't text him that much. And because you have an adjustment addiction, you're thinking, oh, 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 wait, 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 wait a second. Oh, 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 are you going to stop liking me because I don't text you as much? And so what are you going to do? You're going to make an adjustment and you're going to say, okay, never mind. I was doing a thing where I wasn't going to try to get to know you over text. But now that you said you're having some anxiety about me not texting you, I'll be on my phone 25 eight so that you never miss an opportunity to talk to me. Despite them telling you that this is something they want, it will never ever benefit you to be an essay texter. There's, there's a reason that things happen in stages, allowing your relationship to build up over time and being patient in getting to know someone before you make the decision of jumping right into sleeping with them, allowing yourself to analyze. Do we even have a real connection here that when you go out on a date with someone and you might not see them for a week, what do you think is happening throughout that time? You're able to think about the person you're able to analyze, huh? I kind of like spending time with them, huh? I can kind of contrast what it's like to be around them versus what it's like to not be around them. The guys realize that they enjoy their time with you way more than they enjoy their time away from you. And their desire to see you more builds and builds and builds until they say to themselves, I can't just be with you casually dating you. You need to be my girlfriend because I want that much of you. And being an essay texter will only make it easier for him to say, you know what? I, I see you and I talk to you what feels like 24 seven and I never really get a break. When you take a step back, it's going to feel mean to not be available on the cell phone texting 24 seven all times of the day. Uh, number six, come back season. One of these traits you're going to possess is the desire to allow people to come back into your life. Here is the worst part about that because you're a nice girl and you want to believe in the goodness in people and their ability to change change, you'll constantly find yourself in a position where regardless of how much time has passed, you always feel like someone deserves another chance. Let me give you an example of that. You start talking to a guy that you meet uh, on a dating app. You're chit chatting over the phone. Maybe you, you text a little bit. Maybe you FaceTime sometimes and maybe you call sometimes, but he never seems to ask you out on a date. Going back and forth about it, you sometimes you address it and you ask him why he's not asking you out on dates. He makes excuses like, oh, I'm busy this day, but it always fizzles out into nothing. And you go through these cycles of talking, texting, FaceTiming, not going out on a date, you become frustrated, things kind of fizzle out. And then there's a period of time, maybe one month, a couple of weeks or a couple of months that he, you guys don't speak. And then he comes back. Oh, I miss you. I haven't heard from you in a bit. And you go through the same cycle over and over and over again. When you show people that there is no time constraint on how urgent it is to put their best foot forward, you allow them to realize that treating you bad this time doesn't really mean anything. They can just come back from the dead just by waiting a period of time. They never take any individual opportunity as a serious 
urgent, scarce opportunity to get access to you or build a relationship with you. And as you continue to be in the cycle over and over again, you find it difficult to emotionally detach yourself from that individual guy and also more difficult to build new relationships with new people because you're in this hamster wheel. So men realize they don't have to respect you. They don't have to put their best foot forward. It's not urgent to be who you need them to be. And so he says to himself, why bother making this important to me when it's not important at all? There are no consequences to my actions here. Number seven is being a dull pair of scissors, not being able to cut people off. I'm not just talking about your romantic relationships. I'm also talking about your friendships, anyone in your life that doesn't show them to be someone who is capable of treating you with respect and care and dignity. One of the major mistakes that some of you are making when you're trying to build new relationships with new men and you want them to respect you, your past relationship can really, really hurt you or help you because that is a prime example of what will happen to the new guy if he doesn't do the right things. You want to know what guys perceive of you when you have this nice girl habit that you have an inability to cut people off. They say to themselves, oh, good. I know. I shouldn't have to have respect for her. I shouldn't have to care about anything I do here. When you tell him stories about your ex and how he treated you, and if you allowed him to still be in your life after mistreating you, he thinks to himself, oh, perfect. I'm way better than that man. So if he got away with that, I know I can get away with 10 times as much. Gee, why would I treat her like, like a piece of gold? Like she's the best thing since sliced bread. Other, I, I want to treat her like trash like all the other guys did. They still get to access her. They realize that there are no consequences for mistreating you. Being a dull pair of scissors is the realization that they can present themselves any way that they want in this relationship and it doesn't matter. A function of people approaching you the right way, respecting you the right way, putting their best foot forward is by giving them a sense of urgency and making it known that they're not going to have access to you if they don't treat you how you expect them to treat you. You can have men desiring you uh, like a hungry hyena, but it does require work and strategy. Okay, it doesn't happen magically, which is why it doesn't always happen. 